Father's Day on Food News and Shoes. It's all about the beans as Chef Jeremy and Sylvia head out to Berea to talk to the seed and heirloom specialist Bill Best. Then Chef Jeremy teaches Sylvia how to string up beans and cooks up some homemade grits with leather britches. That's all today on Food News and Shoes. Timeless experience and three years of nurturing create the real magic of Kentucky's finest thoroughbreds, like Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale, mellowed for six weeks in seasoned oak bourbon barrels to infuse that special aroma and flavor of the bluegrass state for you to savor slowly. Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale, the beer of bourbon country. Worldly influenced, locally inspired. Azure Restaurant and Patio, contemporary fine dining and a relaxed atmosphere right here in Lexington. Modern award-winning dishes with a distinctive Kentucky twist from the mind of nationally recognized chef Jeremy Ashby. Voted best fine dining in Lexington. Azura is chef created, chef driven, and Kentucky proud since day one. Taste something unique at Azure Restaurant and Patio, Beaumont Center in Lexington. Today's shoppers are informed. When shopping for the family meal, today's shopper chooses Critchfield Meats for fresh, all-natural quality meats, guaranteed. Make the right choice and visit our family before you feed yours. Critchfield Meats, the meat specialist, family owned and operated since 1969. That's a great A choice, folks. From concessions to festivals, bingo halls to daycare facilities. Seaworth Superstore is Kentucky's largest dealer for all your weekend kitchen or mobile kitchen supply needs. From popcorn to snow cone machines, we have the largest selection of new and used equipment with warranties to help keep your mobile food truck or weekend event going strong. That's Seaworth Superstore for Sales Road, Lexington. That's Seaworth Superstore, putting the Kentucky workforce back to work. Now, the award-winning dishes enjoyed at Azure Restaurant and Patio can be featured at your next event when you order from Azure Catering. Our services include menu planning with our amazing food, event site location, rental equipment, linens, event staffing, and seeing to every last detail of your wedding, special event, or corporate event. Visit AzureCateringKY.com or call 859-327-7125 to start customizing your menu today. I passed Sullivan every day on my, on my way to work and I knew uh, that they had a culinary program and after researching culinary schools, you know, I found that Sullivan had a very, uh, a very elite program, so I wanted to, to be a part of it. Well, Sullivan is, is the perfect program for somebody who's interested in, in having more control over their own um, destiny when it comes to the culinary program. You can, you can grow as much as you want to at Sullivan. You're not hindered by anything. Um, with, with the chefs there, their knowledge is great. Hey, Jeremy, we're here and we're getting ready to go out on the farm with Bill Best. That's right, and uh, right now I'm stringing up some beans. These are what, we, what he would call leather britches, a preservation technique for, for heirloom beans. Yeah. Uh, first you gotta snap them, then you can see, you know, just string them. So. Well, here's his book. It's yeah. called Saving Seeds, Pre Preserving Taste, Heirloom Seed Savers in Appalachia. It's important, it's important work. I've been taking notes. <laughs> and look at here. Oh, that's a good note. <laughs> I love that. Um, Jeremy. Yes. Have you heard of goose beans? Uh, yeah, I do know the story kind of behind goose beans. It, had, it was a gizzard function thing, right? Yeah, well, it took either a deceased turkey or a deceased goose, mm -hmm. <laughs> either one, and when they were dressing them to put them in the oven, right, uh, back in a uh, tale told to children all over the South, they would find beans yep. in their craw. Right. So that was like the turkey crawl bean. You'd find that bean in there. Yeah. And then that's, you know, how a bird helped itself, helped, helped digest, digest it. The food really just kind of yeah, helped it crumble it up in the gizzard. Yeah, that's how a gizzard works. Oh, whatever. It's a, an amazing little, little thing. Well, Jeremy, what are heirloom seeds? Because, you know, when I walk into a store mm. in the spring and I'm like bewildered by what I see, mm -hmm. usually next to these little spades and equipment stuff, I even know about that. Is that amazing? There is next to that a big stand of seeds. Yeah. What am I getting when I get those? That's more like what they call 
conventional? Right, the little seed packets are conventional, then there's organic seeds, some may say heirloom varieties, but you know, the whole point I think you're trying to get on is, okay, what is an heirloom yeah. seed? What and is it? What's Bill Best talking about here today? He's talking about things that have been passed down through your family, and that's not just, you know, you know say you have family heirlooms, you, it's these seeds here yeah. I, I that you, you pass down, and, and it's not really for... Uh, you know, I guess a hobby. It's more for survival. This is how people grow food from, you know, year after year. And, you know, the preservation techniques, you know, keeping these beans is, is just how people can sustain themselves. So heirloom beans naturally have been passed down through families and generations. They take the best, you know, their best tomatoes or their best squash or their yeah. best beans and they save them every year and they replant them. And he's a mater man too. Maters. He's, as in, he's got lots of tomato varieties. He's been collecting for, what, 70 years? But Jeremy, this isn't new, is it? I mean, we started out talking about tradition. Back in the 16th, 17th century, they wrote books much as this book <laughs> right. because it combined history and tradition and food, which as John Edgerton, the very famed uh, writer about mm. food, said food is really the center of everything. And Bill Best certainly kind of epitomizes that. Well, why is that getting, you know, suddenly getting such play? Because at the turn of the last century, yeah people actually did grow their own food. That's all, they, like you said, it was survival. They did, and you know, maybe it's, people are looking for actual flavor now, uh, uh -huh. you know, versus just the grocery store varieties. Maybe, mm -hmm. it, you know, maybe the hobby, and we've always talked about how people want to get their hands dirty again. They have, you know, office jobs, and you know, when it gets to hobby gardening or whatever, it seems like people are looking for something special, something old, and this is the food that uh, people were eating, not even, you know, just 50 mm -hmm. years ago, and for generations before that. And, and it's totally different than what you get in the supermarket. Market. Yeah, and what happened? We had what came in as the age of industrialized food, right. which is like refrigeration kind of brought that along where people uh, went, uh, you know, like almost the pendulum swung the other way. Sure. And all we wanted then was just a pretty round tomato that was tasteless. Right. So, um, oh, look, look, oh, you're getting ahead of me. I need to start sewing. That's right. So, yeah, the, the pretty round tomatoes that are tasteless, that's what we've been used to in the supermarket for quite a while now, but it didn't used to be that way. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying that big, you know, in, in technology and agriculture is a bad thing. You know, we have oh, to no, do that to, to, mm -hmm. to subvert, you know, to feed this population. But, um, you know, we've, we've actually taken some turns with our food and the way we grow it that is not really about flavor. It's not really about health. It's more about, you know, longer shelf life. And um, you know, just you know, prettiness. Some people want to pick out that pretty tomato. Even you know, the heirloom ones are probably a little knobby dumpy and, and knobby and stuff like that. And but, all that, but yeah, tasty. It's all about juicy. the way they taste. Oh yeah. man, they are so good, and these are so good when they get cooked up. And, mm -hmm. and we're going to show that later. That's but right. you know, uh, one of the things that Lee Meyer at the College of Agriculture, UK's College of Agriculture, said is that one of the things we're doing is getting away from believing technology is the only answer. And right. it gets into Jeremy all that stuff about genetically modified organisms organisms, you know, all that stuff, which isn't all bad. It's just, you know, how far do you go? Mm -hmm. Because we're starting to find the human side right. and how important the human side is to all of this. And, you know, while, you know, some technologies are like allowing us to know more about food, like happy animals make for better hamburgers or something. You know? <laughs> That's true. Right. That's what they say. You know, and, and, you know, <laughs> there's just weird things with GMOs. You're certainly not going to be able to plant this yeah. next year because they, you know, modify the seed to where yeah. it doesn't grow anymore. And Jeremy, they can go to our website, www.foodnewsandshoes.com yes. right. and find out more about heirloom seeds yes. and Bill Best. Hey Jeremy, we're taking a field trip out to Berea, so what's up? You know, we're on our way to see heirloom seed savers Bill and Brian Best. Bill's been saving heirloom seed for many decades. It's fall harvest time, so let's see what these guys are up to. Let's go. Uh, Brian and I have been shelling out cream colored fall beans uh, this morning and uh, they were picked yesterday out of the field and brought in here to dry out a little bit more. Typically we like to pick them when they're at this stage uh, but uh, these had dried up a little bit on us and uh, that's why we tried to get them dried out just as soon as we could. But and th this is the sum total of all that we have of these right here. Yeah. But, and Brian is your grandson, right? Brian is the grandson. Yeah. And he's been working with me 10 years now. But anyhow, the, these beans, these beans uh, are at the shelly stage. These are called shelly beans. And the same variety right here are called dry beans. And uh, these, of course, oh, okay. will be uh, selling for seed. Which ones do you sell for seed? Well, once they're dry. 
once they okay, once they're, they're dry, dry they but you can see we'll the see difference, the difference. Uh, these right here but the time they dry down they will be like this smaller and then we will you know, package them put them in the freezer where they'll be good for at least 30 years 35 years or indefinitely I should say but I've germinated them after 35 years Is that, that right? these I don't like these beans if, to grow these beans, I don't like to grow bush beans at all, but we grew, do because some of them are in demand because the yield is so poor on them. Oh, what do you mean uh, by that? Um, so few beans on them, and uh, the uh, climbing beans will have 15, maybe even 20 times oh, as much. Beans inside, seeds inside. No, of the oh. beans on the vine, of oh, okay. the hulls on the vine. Oh, okay. Uh, they're just much more productive, but uh, you won't find many of them being sold commercially now because uh, they can't be picked by machine. And virtually all of the beans sold commercially have been bred to be tough uh, so that they can be picked by machine. And then the, the protein, the seeds that I just showed you are not allowed to appear. They say pick while young and tender. That means the modern bean is just fodder. It's, uh, it's the fiber and water and very little else. Bill took us into his bean drying room. He is Bill and the Beanstalk. And he's got this nifty machine which shucks the beans. This is the only mechanization in this process. Imagine doing this by hand back in the old days. You can see the hulls come out here and the little, the seeds drop down in the green box underneath. But uh, that's sure will save a lot of time. It saves a lot of time, and you can push them through a lot faster than he's pushing them through as, as well. Now push a few more through at once and try and lift it up just a little bit. It's where you have to be careful with your fingers. <laughs> right. Yeah, you can lose one or two. Right. But this, this works very well, and when you do three acres or more of these, you get very tired of them. Um, the traditional way is to put them up in, in a sack and beat it. Uh, with um, and have a small hole at the bottom of the sack and beat it with a stick and let the seeds fall through. This way we still have to to blow them out to get rid of all of the dust and the chaff. But it works very, very well. Now Brian, uh, take that out and just show, show them how it's, uh, how the beans are coming in here. See the beans are in there. Now if you go on through and what, what we have to do is just put those back in there. And it's when you're doing it quickly, you will have a few like that. But see, these are, these are beautiful beans. They're, they're ready to blow out and uh, put in gallon-sized bags and stick them in the freezer. After seeing how the beans are extracted, we're heading to the field in Bill's four-wheeler. But we begin with the Bill Best Bean Treasure Map. Yeah, he's got this yellow note paper which maps out the many varieties of heirloom beans. Sound simple? I'm sure it's not. This so this isn't the bean. one you have labeled as a turkey crawl on your website? It's very, very similar, and I tend to think that it is the same one. Yeah. Now, when I when you take the it. seeds off of these, we'll find out. Now, this has got a pretty good, it's producing a lot of seeds in here, right? Uh, five, six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. seven. They'll be average seven, probably, and from six to eight for the most part. But it's, it's a wonderful bean. Now, how do you prepare this bean? Now, would you string this bean? Yes, oh yes. Yeah. Well, the only stringless one we have is the one that you, you saw there. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't know whether this string oh, is ready to... It it's, it's really not ready to string. This is not a full bean. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, Appalachian people ate full beans. That means the seed was fully formed. And these are at least a week away uh -huh. from being fully formed. But, right uh, and you can't you can't string them either until they're fully formed, so you'll end up with some strings. This is what is called a um, um, soldier bean uh, on the stem there. It's only got four on it, but it mean, makes for easy picking. You uh -huh. put them all four, but we have beans that I've seen as many as 12 beans on a stem. Usually the smaller greasy beans, you have 12 beans on a stem. No, up to 12. There's a bean that you s said you prefer a lot. Is That's the non-tough half runner, right? Right. And you've done a lot of work with that one bean. What might, was it just 
pretty a big yield. Is that what it is? Or just yeah, heavy it? yield and very tender, and very that's tender. Uh, oh, that's okay. what I gave you them. Those the um, the that's what those are leather from. Leather bridges are from non tough. Yeah, I chose those. What are those breezy little. beans? What does that mean? I'm going to show you right now. Does that mean they're greasy? That means they're slick. Slick. That means they're slick. And we're going to pick some for you to take with you here. This is the greasy back bean, and this is a greasy cut short right here. It was sent to us. Not as a cut, not a cut short, but it's a uh, cornfield <clears throat> half runner. This is a half runner, and you can see how the uh, the uh -huh. bugs were really oh, messing yeah. with us there. No, those are ready to pick, and we'll be picking those. These uh, are ready. Later They're not exactly right here. grown. I mean, right for here. a chef getting a hold of these, once you get done stringing them, which is a feat, um, I think I paid seventy dollars a bushel for. Oh, that's cheap. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm saying go well over a hundred. And uh, what they eat, they're, they're oh, just right. really good. Now, see this, and then you, this is ready to, to string. And then these are the snap beans. See this? Uh -huh. But notice how large the seeds are in them. But uh, Brian, just go ahead and pick them a bunch of these that are, that are ready. Okay, now how do you but, cook a greasy bean? Well, it's the best way to cook it. Like he was describing a while ago with ham hock and Just what, the, what heck. That's a bean recipe, right? Yeah, I think that's probably what we're going to end up doing. Hey, Jeremy, our heads are full of bean facts. We've picked some beans and we're headed home so you can show us how to cook them up and maybe even teach me a thing or two. Up real nice. Well, thank you very Getting much. Now that field in Berea and yes. all those beans and everything you, with Bill Benz. You know that guy is just an incredible source of information, especially for heirloom yeah. beans. Oh, he and mm -hmm. you know we came back with kind of a, a nice little stash of gold it's here, um, greasy beans, which we talk about. You know the chefs the are loving, the vine, yeah. loving these things. They're pretty. They are pretty. So what we do is we need to get started on a recipe. What we're going to do is make some of these beans, and it takes a little bit of a uh, little bit of time. We're going to use a ham hock. Tell me about um, a ham hock. Ham what is hock that? is basically the, the bottom shank of the of the pig. This one's been smoked. Uh, this is traditionally what you want for you know a nice green bean, you know, smoked ham hock. You can tell oh, nice, nice flavored ingredients. So <laughs> anyway, a couple of these uh, into a little pot of water. What we're gonna do is make a foundational broth, which these beans are gonna cook in. Um, we're gonna show basically how to make the, the, the lazy house or the, the, the leather britches really, the dry beans. But Leather we're also going to use, a lot of people throw away their broth. Uh -huh. We're going to utilize that. That's where the nutrients are. Do we have to string those, Jeremy? Yeah, we're going to uh -huh. do a little bit of work stringing these beans and uh -oh, show people how to, to dry them out. Around. But it's pretty, okay. pretty important steps. So anyway, ham hocks into a pot of water. We're going to add some fresh onion, which has been diced already. Mm -hmm. um, you know, traditionally, that's really about all people would put into their beans would be ham hock and onion yeah. and boil and that down for a while. And sort of go by taste, just sort of put in, just not, not necessarily certain amount. I mean, you're like an expert, right? Yeah, what well, would I'd say like probably a good, you know, <laughs> half a cup of onion there, uh -huh. a little bit of salt, uh, cracked pepper would be good, and here's some garlic. You want to grab that pepper mill for us? I think I can manage that. A little bit of chopped garlic goes in there. Um, use, traditionally, people don't put garlic in it. I like that in mine. We're going to make something called a pot liquor out of this juice. Pot liquor. And that's a really Southern nice term. ingredient. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, lots of good cracked pot pepper. Liquor. And don't really hold back on this. You really want to give yeah, it a lot of turn, lots of pepper. I think pepper is underestimated, don't you? And they, they say it makes gravy. Man, it's really it's, good. And it's a great ingredient. Think about it. Um, there's no salt without pepper. You know, the one thing I do with it is I, I traditionally don't grill with it or sear with it because it becomes a little bit bitter. But, you know, finishing oh. a dish with pepper or foundational sauces, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, you can't have salt without pepper. It's just like yin and yang, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, uh, fresh thyme. You need a good little half handful of that going right into the pot. Now, if you can see here, it's kind of a beautiful melange I'm, of, I'm of ingredients. I'm olfactory, whatever you want to say, nose. Mm -hmm. I love smelling these things. The idea behind a recipe like this is mm -hmm. you want to take the beans and just cook them for hours and let, let these reconstitute in the broth and take on all these ingredients. Uh, so these what we want to do bridge. is get these. These are what these become, right? That's right. That's what okay. they become. First thing you want to do, we're going to get this on the stove and go for a good hour before we add the beans. That really develops the stock. All these flavors are stratified in the broth. All the flavors are mixed, and it's just going to be a nice stock. 
Um, we're also going to use this stock before we add the green beans to make our grits for this recipe. Oh, so oh, this I see, goes I see. onto the stove and we'll uh -huh. start, uh, All right, let's start do a foundation it. here. Okay. I like foundations. Okay, so yeah, what we have is, um, you know, the greasy beans. And one thing we learned uh, from Bill and, you know, the old traditional thing, you know, beans are such a foundational thing in the South. And, you know, people nowadays, they have these images of when they were young, maybe their grandparents sitting on the porch and uh -huh. stringing yeah. beans. And, yeah. you know, more and more, that's, that. more and more that's kind of lost. You don't really no. see that anymore. So when you get something as precious as a, a greasy bean or some of these heirloom beans, it's kind of nice to repaint those images. So you do want to treat these in the same way. Okay. Stringing a bean is, um, you want to take the, the well, end off. In a moment, yeah. And run the string down this way. And same thing on the other side. Yeah, and Bill talks uh, about not cutting off too much of the bean, that you actually use that little tip. Yes. Right? right. I did bushels of these when I was a kid. So that one strings too. In southern Ohio. Mm -hmm. With my parents from eastern Kentucky. There you Look, go. Oh, see, how, see how that just so kind of good. peeled off and then it goes on Beautiful. the other side too. Beautiful. So, you know, you have to sit around and peel a whole or string a whole mess of beans, right? That's kind mess, of the, yeah. the, the I love thing. that. Uh, that's a term. At that point, we can, you know, snap them and then lay them out uh, on a paper towel to dry. Now, another method would be to, you know, take your old sewing kit. Mm -hmm. You know, some people use dental floss. Some people use um, just a good sewing thread, but needle and thread. And you'll run it through. And, um, and this creates what? Well, what we're going to do is run these through a, a big, you know, a big mess of them. You know, over and over again, and hang them up in your kitchen to oh, dry. Oh, like like this, and then you just do it like this. This is fun. Yeah, and this is just you know another preservation method. You know, you've got canning, you've necklaces. got pickling, you've got drying, and this is a yeah. way to dry beans. Um, so and they turn some into old country these. places might have uh, a big big bundle of these hanging up in the in the ceiling and on the rafters. And eventually, these get hung up. These get and hung dry up. Dry out. And they dry out. And they become these. And they become these. And they are called leather leather bridges. Uh -huh. uh, so a dry bean. And what happens is the sun or the dehydration really, really intensifies the flavors, yeah. right? So um, these are going to go into a, uh, into the stock that we're making yeah. and cook for a very, very long time. Okay. okay now it's grit time. Uh, we use a stone ground grit from the south. Instant grits just will not do. No, we I have got to have, have the real thing. Have the real thing. Okay. And our nice, you know. Smoked ham hock broth is going, lots of fresh onions and thyme and garlic. Mm, it's really so developing. You can see it kind of get cloudy and, and lovely. You know, classical French cooking tell you to simmer, but you know, down in the south, we just, you know, this is just something you boil down. Yeah. So, you know, some good grits, right? Start with butter. Good heap of butter right into the pan. You're going to let that kind of get melted up. Mm -hmm. Do you use pure butter or? Uh... Unsalted butter. You know, Unsalted. that way we, we know that. Um, there really isn't any salt in there for preservative, but also for flavor standpoint. You know, your salted butter, you never know the ratio of salt. Oh, okay. So you always know, get salt. Because they change. Salt. And then you can always add. Right? You can always add salt at the, you know, I like the season at the end. Mm -hmm. So a good wooden spoon, get that butter going. Wooden spoon. What's important about a wooden spoon? I don't know, just something a little bit sexy about the way sexy. it moves, you know? <laughs> I thought just there was like some big scientific it, reason. The way it works. Risottos, grits, those kind of porridges, I like wooden spoons for. See how much character this one has? It's got, it's yeah, shredded yeah, now, it's got a little true. burn. Actually, it does kind of seem it's better. It's well loved. Yeah. Some fresh garlic goes right into the butter. Now, the thing about when you're adding aromatics like onion and garlic is you really want to let these take off yeah. in the butter. So you can I already start to smell that. That's the perfume. You got it boiling, so it's got a kind of yeah. a higher heat. High it heat. is kind of a high heat. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Okay. We don't really want browning, but we do want to let that cook for a good uh -huh. minute or so. And see how it's just sizzling and oh, perfuming yeah. the uh, the butter. We got that. Mm, smells so good. Nice little bit of yellow onion the in rest there. Of the I'd say that was a good uh, three fourths onion. of a cup. Is that a sweet onion? It is. Well, it's a sweeter onion than say a white onion. This is just a yellow Spanish onion. Pretty much the most common onion you find at the grocery. Nothing, nothing really special there. Yeah. Now a lot of people would really brush through this step. I want to develop these flavors. So let this go. Keep stirring. Give it a good five minutes, let everything get translucent. Okay. We'll just kind of sit here and we'll cook. Amazing. So now that we have the onions where I like them, a mm -hmm. little bit translucent, yeah. moving, you know, they're kind of dancing around with a little party here. Um, we go ahead and start adding our broth from, from, the, from, that stock from the stock, that's right? Boiling away. Now, a good ratio for grits is about, um, I, I like to go about four to one in terms of broth to grits. So we need a good amount of this. Four to one. As in uh, broth and to grits. We're going to add a good amount of broth here. 
Just keep adding it. Yeah. Are you keeping count? <laughs> That's uh, why I can't cook. Well, I kind of meant by volume ratio. That never was good, yeah. I do want to keep this boiling here, though, so we don't lose any momentum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be just fine. Yeah. So this now, is boiling. I'm going to go ahead and reinforce it with just a little bit more fresh thyme. Going to let that kind of roll in there. I love the way thyme perfumes grits and pastas and grains. Um, we do have to pick this out later, but anyway, you can already start. Any to other smell herb that, that you can use besides thyme? Anything you want. You know, fall or spring. It just depends on which what feel you want. Uh, sage would be amazing. Good sage. old southern food. Uh, a little Perfect. bit more butter in there. Okay. And then we're going to stir in some grits. And then we're, okay, so that's the ratio piece, right? Yeah, and I'm not going to use all this. We'll actually uh, give a little bit more accurate descriptions on the screen website here, but a little bit of grits to take on that stock. Mm -hmm. And then, so this start, this boils until the grits absorb the Right, liquid. and you want to stir pretty occasionally, I mean, pretty every two to three minutes. I'm going to turn this down quite a bit. I do want to see some bubbles, but not a whole lot of this violent action here. Hey, goody, tell okay, me what happens everything now. Everything came together. We've got amazing creamy grits, uh, greasy beans that have, you know, they were dried, now they're cooked. The ham hock is in there. We've got a nice pot liquor broth, which is just, it's mm. killing me with the, 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 the fumes are awesome. All right, now so, what? This is just a great little, little country style dish. See how these grits just kind of fall Oh, they are creamy. Into the bowl. You know, lots of good fresh thyme. I'm going to pick out that twig because we don't want to serve that. But, um, you know, it's kind of nice to have it in there. Okay, so you just they've flavored the, the dish so well. So we'll take this little piece of Are you better of off thyme. doing it in a bowl-like setting like this? Oh, yeah. A plate's just going to not contain all the good, all mm -hmm. that goodness mm -hmm. of those grits, you know, coming down like that. So uh, a little bit of these greasy beans. See that ham hock in there? Yeah, and, I do. It's you know, looks lucky it's made it this far without me eating Delicately it. down. Uh -huh. Stack those up, and this is just as good and southern as it gets. But <laughs> you know, the thing so is, is, it's just so <laughs> the ingredients are so pristine. Um, we've got that poached egg we did. Oh yeah. We'll kind of bring that out and kind of uh, put that down to where we can delicately lay it right on top because we're going to poke in there and it's going to sauce the whole dish, right? Yeah. So once we have that in place, and we got. I'm just gonna, you know, act like it's a kind of a garden dish. Well, yeah. you know, a nice good old, Big old slice of a southern tomato, right? Look how red that thing is. And I've got to have a little salt on that. You know, don't forget to put a little salt on your tomato, right? Absolutely. So, a little bit of this down in here, and then maybe a little pickle. Nutty, nutty. You know, if you got some pickled vegetables uh -huh. in the house, garnish with them. Okra or onion or green bean. Mm -hmm. You know, like a green bean two ways here. I've just got a little bit of red onion. And do pickled there too. How and do you the last pickle? Thing, What's it in? A uh, little red wine vinegar and sugar. Um, little things I keep around just to kind of put garnishes mm -hmm. on, on, on things. And then a um, little homemade hot sauce for me. Me and too. And this is like a whole other episode we got to do is chilies and hot sauce. and. Is this homemade? Make, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You can find some really good sauces, you know, in mm -hmm. uh, Kentucky kind of stuff. So, People you know, are doing a lot of value added products, in fact. There's a wonderful little dish there. That's with all so these garden pretty. products, and man, is that going to be comforting when you just Ooh. dig in there. And, I want to dig in. Where's that's a, so where's good. A I've got a spoon with some hot sauce on it. Yummers. Yeah, go for it. Okay, let's do it. Got to get all the ingredients in there. Yep. Okay, now there, you there go. a bean, a little bit of a tomato. There all you right. go. How, how you, oh, we were going to poke the egg. I'll take care of that part, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. See if that's kind of see how it's saucing right into the bowl. That's mm. what you're looking for, a little egg, a lot of tomato and beans. That is so good. Yummers. Mm. Mm. Good. That's like a perfect southern brunch. Mm -hmm. I want to taste these grits too, just a little bit on their own. And there's just something about that. There's a there's history in that bowl. You know, there's just there is history in that bowl, and uh, Bill Best think people like him who yeah. are bringing that tradition back, bringing it is taste okay. together. And, you know, and it's also just a, a variation of what's been done in the past, pickles and uh -huh. vinegars and hot sauce, and it all comes together. It's just kind of making it all come together. We're going back for more, you know? Yeah, Why not? we'll be back. Food news.
News and Chews is brought to you by these proud sponsors. Alltech, helping farmers feed the world. Azure Restaurant and Patio, worldly influenced, locally inspired. Sullivan University, offering higher education for people with higher goals. Azure Catering, catering the most important events, yours. Critchfield Meats, fresh, high quality, all natural meats, guaranteed. And Seaworth Superstore, fulfilling all your kitchen supply needs.